There we go. That's a nice fish. Oh wow. This is a jumbo gill. Yeah, this, oh, this is a really nice gill, man. Well, howdy everyone. I've got about an hour and a half to kill before a meeting and before some rain might come through. This is one of my favorite sections of creek that I used to fish a lot. Some of you will know where this is. This can be a really great spot. You never know what you'll catch here, but it sure is pretty. Right out there, I do have a stringer because we are wanting to get some more uh, crappie and whatnot in the freezer. Now, oh, what do we got here? Oh, the old uh, green sunfish. They're always aggressive. I call these the tilapia of the Midwest. There we go. Oh yeah. I knew something had been messing with me. <laughs> that is what you call a keeper creek crappie for sure. For sure. Sure enough. Got a gilly on the little bimbo skunk fly. Hey, three species, that's fun. Three. That's what we call, that's a keeper gill for the creek on the bimbo. Yeah, that's a keeper gill. I'll tell you one of my favorite things when it's real warm in summer, ooh, there's some big shad. Just, just get in here with a pair of wading boots and shorts on and just forget about all your cares, get in the water. It's nothing like being in water to Make you feel good. Oh, there's shad everywhere. We got all sorts of shad around us here, folks. Took it on the fall, a little bluegill maybe. Oh, it's a nice, uh, nice long ear. Oh, that's a pretty one. Oh yeah, I love long ears. Gorgeous little guys. This spot, there's not, there's only like some six foot deep water. Most of it's like between two and four feet deep. Oh, that's a better fish. There we go, that's a keeper. Took that one in the fall, a little further down. That's a keeper white. Got some meat on it. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, well, I was gonna give up on that jig, but I don't, I don't think I will just yet. Anyway, and it can really vary in here too. Sometimes the, the current will just change real subtly and all of a sudden you won't be catching fish in one spot and then all of a sudden you'll just start catching them for 15 minutes and then the current will change a little. And then all of a sudden they'll move like eight feet away or three feet away. Try putting a little double jig bobber action up in their, up in their business here see if they can resist that or not there we go this is a nice fish oh wow this is a jumbo gill yeah this oh this is a really nice gill man whoa that is a big creek gill Oh my goodness. You're really not going to catch a much larger out of a creek. Wow, that's a gorgeous fish. 
Oh my goodness, people. I get as excited about a fish like that as I do anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a stringer full of gills like that all day. All day, son. Whoa, something hit it as soon as it touched the water. What is this? Wow, another aggressive gill. Oh, this time on the pink, okay. Man, that thing had barely even touched the water. Wow, we're getting into some, some action here, folks. Look at that, another one. Oh, what's this? He was in the shallow water too. Man. Those gillies are stacked up. I'm gonna keep that one too. We are getting into some gilly, gilly, gillies. <laughs> oh man. You know, I haven't kept fish out of here for, I don't know, a few years. Not this spot. Another one. They're in shallow water. They are stacked up in the shallow stuff. That's another slimy old green sunfish. We'll call this one Big Jake. Jake the Snake from Peanut Butter Lake. <laughs> Away you go. Hey, it'd be fun to get a walleye on here. It's been a long time since I picked up a walleye down here. Typically though, I'm using some uh, night crawler or something if I get into one of them. Ooh, what's this? What do we got here? A hard fighting little crappie. Oh, I'm real tempted. I'm real tempted. Even the crappie are liking that little black bimbo skunk. I'm not gonna keep it though. But like I said, I was tempted. And sometimes when you get tempted, it's just hard to say no, you know? They're even swiping at my bobber here. I'm telling you what, they're wanting to play. They're not playing around today. I mean, they are. They're playing in all the right ways. Man, we could easily get a double header here with how loaded up they are. Another, uh, another long ear. That's the thing with fishing with double jigs. It can get a little, it can get a little squirrely with your line getting snarled up and such. Okay, we do have some crappie right here. That guy almost took it. He almost took it. We're gonna get him yet. We're gonna get him. Yeah. He grabbed that as I was pulling it up over that ledge. And that's gonna be another keeper gill, I believe. Yep. Yeah. See, look at that, they're loving that bimbo skunk. See, I'm planning a big party with some friends. And I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get enough fish in the freezer that we can have a really good a really good fish fry so like if I could bring home 15 or 20 oh man that'd be great they're loaded up in here you guys guys and girls somewhere within the next half hour to two hours it looks like we could get slammed with some pretty pretty significant rain every time I get over there they're just crushing it in that shallow water Oh yeah, that guy barely had it. Yeah, they're just barely swimming up to it and grabbing it. That's a better, oh, come on you. That's a better black crappie. 
I mean, he probably doesn't look much different than those other two I've let go, but he, I can feel him. He's just a uh, thicker fish. Look at this pretty little creek stringer. That's a nice little stringer fish. I think we got eight on there now. You can either spend your time or you can invest your time or you can waste your time. But once it's gone, it's gone. I am enjoying the way I'm spending these moments. Let's put it that way. Oh, here comes a bluegill. I bet he'll grab me right now. No, nope. he just wanted my bobber. <laughs> That's funny. Yep. Another little dude. See, the nice thing I like about the double jig too is if if their mood switches all of a sudden, like we're catching all the fish on that top jig on the dark, tiny pattern, but let's say their mood switches and they drop down a foot, well, all of a sudden that pink jig might start producing. So it just is uh, kind of a confidence booster, you know? I feel like I'm talking really loud, but I feel like I maybe have to because of the waterfalls here. We'll see what the scenery looks like over here. There we go. What do we got? Oh, another gill, this time on the pink. Oh, he's not quite what we're looking for. Very close. Oh, what's that? That might be a crappie. Yeah, I think so. See, sometimes you just gotta come and come at them from a different angle. Dude, they're all like two and a half feet below the bobber. They're liking that top. They're loving that top one. Look at that little fly. That thing is producing, man. If being right is wrong, I don't wanna be right. Being wrong is right. I don't want to be wrong. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> we just need a walleye and a smallmouth and a white bass and a rock bass. And a catfish. Well, I think small. Let's go big. Or we'll just take another big old creek bluegill. Oh, you guys. I'm telling you what. When they get, when they get thick like this in a creek, there's just nothing like it. Nothing like it, I'll tell you. Probably nine out of 10 videos, I'm just doing catch and release. Uh, maybe eight out of 10. But man, when I can bring home a stringer like this, of delicious uh, crappie and gills, I'm gonna do it. You know I'm gonna do it. Why wouldn't you? I mean, we love fried fish. My fried fish game has gotten pretty strong over the last couple of years, I'd say. Yeah, there. You know, one thing I've never caught in here though is, uh, I've never caught a red ear. Never caught a shell cracker in here. Maybe one day, who knows? Who knows? Ah, there comes a fellow angler coming to test his skills. I'm telling you, this is a popular spot. And I'm sure a lot of you know exactly where it is. But like I said, I just, I just really haven't come down here for the most part for years because I got so discouraged with all the amount of fish I saw coming out of here in nets. And I know the DNR have been understaffed for a long time. I, I'd call and they just couldn't come out. Now I understand if somebody's throwing a net for shad, like, I mean, there's just thousands of shad in here right now. You know, you can net them, make for great catfish bait. Well, folks, I'm running out of time. I am running out of time. Maybe we can pick up one or two more.
finally got one on the jig here. Pretty sure we got a crappie up. Oh, I'm a little tempted by him. No, too small. A little too small. Let me show you what the big winner was today for lures. So there's my pinky finger for reference. That's that little fill bobber that I love using. That was a little probably 164th ounce a blonde. That's a bimbo skunk hair jig called a blonde. And then above it, so maybe I think a 180th or 184th ounce, this little fly. I love that little fly. And that caught 90% of the fish today probably caught 30 fish in a very short time this is the the mess of success the pinwheel of success if you will and uh i don't know this doesn't really do it justice but boy there's a couple real big bluegills on here one real nice crappie hey uh thanks for coming along and uh we'll do it again remember bad days fishing ain't a bad day i'm glad i was able to get out in the creek, end it with a nice sunset here. <laughs>